so nice to have you here at Kolkata Literature Festival. It was a panel of very powerful women today. It was, and I'm very pleased to be here at uh, the book fair. It is uh, quite amazing, the, the kind of uh, outpouring of people and just how, how many people come just to buy books and uh, how, how great the variety of books is. It's astounding. Bengalis do make it their culture to love book fair. It's, it's a cultural thing here in Kolkata. So, st talking about culture and talking about normalizing certain things, Prelude to a Riot was an amazing book. And uh, the thing about it is that two families, and you have shown their intolerance, which is there, but it's bubbling right beneath the surface. It's there. And no one's doing anything because it's part of something that's quoted as normal. So... How did that idea come about? The idea came from uh, experience. I was traveling somewhere in the south and it was a very beautiful place. I had gone there to research uh, labor rights actually, wages. I was completely on a different track and I went there and what I found was that uh, it was strange but um, everybody was very nice to me personally. But the moment we got talking, uh, within a few minutes, within half an hour, something would come out which was bigoted, which was anti, anti not only anti-people, anti-worker, most definitely suspicious of minorities. And this whole discourse around them being outsiders, being infiltrators. Just the fact that anybody who is a little bit different from you, is a little bit unfamiliar to you, was so easily called an infiltrator. Um, or the questions raised about how they make money. I mean, they make money the way everybody makes money. They work, they earn. But their earnings were seen as suspect. Everything about them was seen as suspect. I was completely uh, blindsided by it. I was also uh, uh, quite distressed, actually. And, and I, I, I went away and I thought about it. It took me another two years to frame my thoughts and come up with these different voices because I kept hearing those voices in my head. And so I finally decided to write them down. And, and this is the book that came out of it. As you said, you heard these voices in your head. So there was a lot of passion, a lot of rage going on. And yet, when you write the book, the rage doesn't tumble out into a riot. It doesn't break forth to the zenith or the climactic thing that it's hinting at. How was that to channel as a writer? How difficult was that? I think the thing with riots is that I actually do not even think that perhaps the, the word riot is a misnomer. I do not think that at the end of this bigoted kind of conversation and, and this kind of rise crescendo that, that the book is building up towards, I don't think there will be a riot so much. There might be a pogrom. There is a difference between the two. Um, and I do think that uh, my attempt really here was to try and understand. In the writing of this book, I myself was trying to understand what's going on here. Why are people talking like this? So for me, writing is also a way of coming to some clarity inside my own head. Um, I am not very interested in violence per se. The act of violence is kind of... Uh, you know, the same, the same things happen over and over again. If people killing each other, whatever reason, you know, you can, you can say it's a communal riot, you can say it's a caste riot, you can say it's war. The, the end result is the same, a lot of dead people. So 10,000 excuses for one. 10,000 excuses. So I'm not really interested in the end result of violence. I'm much more interested in what causes it. Because once you understand that, you have an opportunity to try and control it. Uh, to me, I think understanding is the beginning of everything. So that was my purpose. Unbound. It is an Odyssean task to find women. First of all, let's start with Virginia Woolf simply saying that most of writing by anonymous was mostly by a woman. And yet here you are, you bring together women separated by decades, by aeons, in different cultures, in different eras. And you combine them together into this one hardbound book. 
how was that journey it's a tremendously big journey just by talking about it i can feel it but how was it for you personally i think one of the things unbound did for me is that it broke down a lot of stereotypes in my own head about what it means to be a woman what it means to be an indian woman and what our history looks like in a way uh, writing i mean, i haven't written most of it i have edited it I've, but the process of collation the process of selection the process of also seeing how different languages different eras speak to each other uh, so what i tried to do was to arrange it they're not arranged chronologically and they're not even arranged uh, you know regionally by language wise they're arranged in a manner that to uh, so that you can see the, how one extract speak to the other and how that speaks to the next there's an interpolation and conversation going there's on. a conversation going yeah. on so i think that that the building of that conversation first it happened within me through the process of reading i was like oh this and then this also and then this also so i began to kind of um understand the meaning of indian womanhood in many ways in both historical terms and political terms and uh, feminist terms so for me that clarity was very useful for me just personally for me it was very useful and i think it is for everybody that if you understand the struggles women have been through the things they have thought and the things that they have expressed then from there then you begin to express what you want to express uh not knowing what women have already been through and kind of starting from scratch each time the struggle is so much harder yeah. if you if you always starting from point zero the struggle to come to an understanding is so much harder in that process of st- not starting from point zero having a link with every extract you create this wonderful grand narrative of sorts that that interlinks all the voices together like how was it like to select and set up such a link su- su- such a chronology of sorts with all the women from different ages coming together in the pages of one book it was challenging for sure it took me so long yeah. and i devoted myself to this task for three and a half years and uh, and it was also very hard to kind of find a uh, good translations because sometimes the same text has been translated by three different people so a lot more things that are wanted to include in it but sometimes a particular publisher or writer will not give you permission so there were all these little challenges but that said one of the things i wanted to do also is to kind of lay out a graph of how far we have come uh how much we have had to struggle but also how far we have come and and you see that in the writings of uh younger women or or contemporary writers who've been writing um it is true that their struggles reflect the struggles of women in the past but it is also true that they reflect the determination of women going forward how much victory has been already gained how much we have gained and also there's a kind of relief and comfort in knowing that uh, there have been struggles in every era this is not new this is not unique to us or our generation so our grandmothers and great grandmothers struggled and we will also struggle and that's okay it's part of our role in as citizens and as women to struggle so after unbound what is the next project perhaps you would have in mind i have been working on a a book a, it's a non fiction book it is a part memoir and it is part uh, journalism and research which is um uh, about identity belonging and attachment homelands that's the next one so it should be out later this year well all the very best for your new project and we hope that it is as lovely and perhaps even lovelier than all your previous works it's it's lovely reading anything that you write ani thank you so much for having us i hope you have a wonderful time at kolkata literature festival